So we've been talking about the idea of, uh, of a, having a population, that uh, a group of people that you want to be able to make some kind of a statement or conclusion about. Uh, you're trying to find something out about this group of people, but you don't uh, necessarily want to study or you can't study the whole group. So you're going to take a sample of that group and study them and then hope that the uh, whatever you find about the sample, that that is also true about the population. Now, what is critical to that is the idea of how do you select people to be in the sample. The method, the technique, the procedure that you use to select people for the, uh, the sample uh, will have dramatically different results uh, for your study. So how your study turns out will be very different depending on whether you select them in one way or whether you select them in another way. So for example, let's say that I'm teaching uh, one of my classes and I decide I'm going to try a new uh, approach that I haven't tried before, and I want to know what the students are thinking about that approach. So um, in this case, the population would be my class, so Abe's class, but I don't want to talk, have to talk to every student in the class, so I'm going to pick some students, and I'm just going to talk to them, and then I'm going to hope that what's true for them is true for the whole class. But let's say that some of the students, these green students over here, these are happy students. They're in a good mood today, the day I decide to do this study. And these students over here, they are grumpy. Now, they might be grumpy for a number of reasons, such as this guy has a very small head. But maybe the main reason for most of them why they're grumpy or happy is because uh, of the change that I made. So the unhappy students are unhappy because they don't like uh, the the change that I made to the class, and the happy happy students are in general happier because they like the change that I made to the class. Now, let's also say that when I start picking students, I don't really want to talk to someone who looks very unapproachable and like they're not in a good mood. So I go in here and I think I'm picking people randomly or fairly, uh, but I'm I'm just grabbing people. I'm going to grab that person and that person and that person because they look like they're in a good mood. And so I talk to them and they think that the change I made to my class is just brilliant and wonderful. And so I conclude 100% of the people in my sample thought that the change I made to the class was great. So I conclude that uh, the whole class thinks that this was great and I'm going to just teach this way for forever. So in this case, what you can see is that I have, I have achieved a, a biased. This is a biased sample. And remember, a biased sample is a sample where the characteristics of the sample are different from the characteristics of the population. So in my sample, everyone was happy. In the population, some people are happy and some people are unhappy. In this case, you can even see that, that more people are unhappy than are happy. So this is a, is a very big problem. I have, made very, I have made a conclusion about the population that is not valid. It's an invalid conclusion because my sample was biased because the way that I, I, I this is the method or technique I used to select my sample was also biased. Biased method means you're going to get a biased, uh, biased sample. So what, what, are, what is a way to overcome this? One way, probably the most common way, is to get a random, random sample. So I select people randomly. That means I have a random sample. What does, what does that mean to say that I've done something randomly? Uh, you probably have a good intuition for this, but I want to make sure that this idea of randomness is clear. If I take a coin and I flip the coin, it has a 50% chance of landing heads up and a 50% chance of landing tails up. What random means is that there is a, an equal chance of each possible outcome. So the chance of getting heads is equal to the chance of getting tails. And that means that it is, we say it's a fair coin, we say it is an unbiased coin, or we also say it's a random uh, coin. The alternative is we had a, if we had a weighted coin, we might get biased results where we get heads all the time and tails very infrequently. Uh, so a random sample, the, this has to do with how we're selecting people to be in the study. 
So in this case, what we're saying is that the, 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 the two possibilities, instead of heads and tails, the two possibilities are they get selected or not selected. So a random sample is, is just a, a sample where each person each person has, hopefully you can see where this is going, has uh, the same has the same or equal chances, equal chances or equal probability probability of being selected. Now, a random sample in general is going to remove bias from from uh, you know, if I use a random selection, if I select people randomly, it's going to remove tend to remove bias from my sample, but there's a very important principle here, which is that the size of that sample really matters. So let me write that down. Uh, sample size, the size of the sample, sample size matters. Why is this the case? Well, you can kind of imagine. Let me let me take a different color here and start picking people at random. And and I and you can kind of imagine that if I pick at random, I might get a happy person. Maybe because I'm being random, I get a happy person again. So with a small sample, picking people at random uh, means I might just by chance still have something a result that's quite biased. So it, this is like flipping a coin. If you flip a coin just two or three times, it's not too unlikely that you get heads every time. Maybe even four or five times you get just heads, 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 heads. But what you should see is that the more times I select people at random, I'm going to start inevitably getting some people, getting some results that are different. So if I flip a coin enough times, uh, it's very unlikely that I'm just going to keep getting heads every time. If it's a fair coin and I'm really doing things randomly, then I will start to get uh, about 50% heads and 50% tails. So I will, uh, if I am doing uh, my selection randomly, that as the size of my sample gets larger, the sample gets closer to, you know, more similar to the population. So I will start to get a more accurate representation of the population. I'll get more people who are, uh, you know, who are uh, unhappy than happy because in the population there are more people who are unhappy than there are people who are happy. So let me make sure that that's clear. Uh, I'm going to pull this down here just so I have a little more room. The principle here that we can state is that as, uh, as size of a random sample, size of a random sample increases, uh, the, we might say the uh, sample we might say that one way of saying this would be to say that the representativeness of the sample also increases. We could also just say that the sample uh, becomes more similar to the population. Now, because this is random, this is a general trend. It is still possible to take a large sample and have it be biased. I could pick uh, 10 people out of this class and happen to still get the, the smaller subgroup, which is the people who are happy. I could, I could just by chance, it's very unlikely, but I could, get, I could pick a bunch of people and just get these people over here or get mostly those people over there. So because it's random, uh, random selection doesn't guarantee absolutely for certain 100% that the sample will have the same characteristics as the population, that it will be representative. But as the sample size gets larger, it is more and more likely that the characteristics of the sample are going to match very closely the characteristics of the population. Now, one question that comes up with this is, uh, obviously, you know, the idea is larger samples are better, but of course, it also takes more work to get larger samples. Um, so how big a sample is big enough? And that depends on a number of factors. Uh, when, the, when you have a small number in your sample, let's say you have five people, and you double that to 10 people in your sample, uh, 
that that's a huge improvement usually in terms of how representative that sample is. And if you go from 10 uh, people to 20, that's a huge improvement. Uh, but there's sort of diminishing returns on uh, increasing that sample size. So uh, math, what they found is mathematically, just because of when we're randomly picking people, how this turns out, uh, if I randomly pick a couple of people, I have a pretty good chance of that being biased. If I randomly pick four or eight or 10 or 20 people, uh, you know, maybe there's still a pretty good chance of it being biased. But as we get to 20, 25 people, uh, the chances of, of, of with that randomness uh, in place, the chances of that sample being biased fall off dramatically by 25 or 30 participants in the sample. Uh, if you're at 30 and you double your sample size to 60, or we could make it even more extreme and say, let's say you've, you've taken a sample of 1,000 people. If that's a random sample, the chances of that sample being biased are extremely low. This would be kind of like saying I'm going to flip a coin and I'm going to get head, uh, heads, you know, over and over and over and over and over again a thousand times or, or you know, 700 or 800 out of those thousand times and I'm going to end up with this very biased sample. Could it happen? Is it, is it allowed by the laws of physics? Sure, uh, but it's very unlikely. So once I'm up to, you know, something really large like a thousand people, it's so unlikely that that sample is substantially biased, that then increasing it, doubling it to 2,000 or 4,000 or, or 10,000 people uh, is not going to give me the same gains as I would have gotten when I went from, say, 10 people to 20 people. Uh, so you'll often see that 25 or 30 participants is what a lot of folks uh, will aim for in a study. That's not a universal law. There are cases in which you would absolutely need to have far more, which you would need to have thousands of people. And that depends on some factors that we'll get into later. But just as a general rule of thumb, there's, there's sort of this diminishing returns uh, idea once you get past 25 or 30 people.